Okay, now that we have our fold out menu, let's actually add our data back in. Uh, and we'll, we'll move it around a little bit just so you can see uh, how we can shift and align things. And we'll talk about that as we go. Uh, but basically we need to draw our properties here. And specifically what we need to do is we need to do a test because if our property dot is expanded, then we want to actually draw our properties, right? Because we want to be able to collapse them and not see them, right? So don't draw them, expand it, then we draw them. So we're going to do a little if check right here. Okay, so now we need to talk about how we can actually draw our properties. Now we're holding on to them up here, and uh, we created this earlier. The first thing we need to do is we need to actually get our properties, right? We need to uh, actually find, uh, we'll just call this fill our properties. Alrighty. We're going to fill our properties in a very similar way that we did before. We're going to search for this exact name on the monster ability to find it name is equal to property so we're getting the monster ability for using property dot run a method called find property relative so it retrieves a serialized property at a relative path to the current property of type and then we send out the string name okay and we'll do the same thing with the other ones too Again, the, the main reason we're doing it this way is just so that we get some built-in editor functionality. It'll just play nicer with Unity, uh, the Unity editor. So like undo and highlighting, or I can't remember exactly what it is, but all those little features that we don't think about. We'll do the same thing here, damage already. The same thing here, element equals property, find property relative and element. Okay, now um, double check these names here, make sure that they're the exact same, right? Because one of the downsides of string searching is if you change that name, this is no longer gonna work. So now that you have this, uh, we have our properties filled. Now we actually need to just draw it. Now we could put in all of our draw code here, which, which we'll probably do at first and then uh, break out my methods, but I actually know ahead of time, like. I'm going to do it the verbose way just to show you like it's really clear and easy to understand because there are a lot of steps to this. And then I'll condense it and do a little bit of shorthand. Um, so we're actually gonna you know, break out this into separate methods. So we'll just say draw name property and we will send it the position of our property because we just we wanna pass that down into the method, right? We're getting this from our on GUI. Like, where is our starting point inside of our inspector menu, um, right? Like right here or right there, or right there, or whatever. So if we give it the position, we can do some calculation to figure out where to draw it. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the other two. So draw damage property. Again, we're gonna send it the position. Do the same thing with the element property. Okay, and then finally we'll end it. Okay, so now we're gonna come here and we're going to add these methods. So private void, well, we can do this the easy way here, right? If we right click, quick action to refactor, generate method, cool, got it. Do the same thing with the other two, generate. Generate, all right. You could copy paste, make them yourself, but this is a little faster. I'm just gonna move these down here. All right, so all we care about is that we need to draw the, I'm going to reorganize these a little, just to align it so that it's in the same order. Okie dokie. Uh, draw name property, draw damage property, and draw element property. Now, I'm going to be very specific with this first one just so you can see it. We'll go through the concepts, and then I'll, you know, be a little less specific with the other ones. All right, what are the things that we need to draw our property? Now, if you remember our rectangle, we need a couple things. We need our x pause, y pause, width, height. Right, I'm just going to show you because when we start putting the stuff in, we're going to do some calculations and, you know, like, is this halfway across the editor window or whatever? I just want to be very clear about how I'm doing this and where this is coming from. So in this case, our name, we want to be in the very top left. Now let's actually think ahead of time what we want to do here. What I eventually want to do is I want to draw my name here. And let's say instead of drawing my damage on a new line, let's do our name on this first half. And then I'll do uh, the damage on the second half. And then below that, maybe we'll talk about how to center or something. 
we will draw our element type. Now you could put these wherever you want, right? Like you could put your element all the way over to the left or all the way to the right, but it uh, doesn't matter. Just to show you the example of how we can start moving things around, uh, how to draw on multiple lines, I'm, I'm just gonna do it this way. So name here, damage here, and then on our second line, we'll put our element somewhere over there. Okay, so to do that, we are gonna start from the left X position, right? Like no matter what our height is, our starting X is gonna be all the way to the left, like the furthest we can go in the drop down. So we're just gonna say X pause is equal to position dot min dot X. You know, we could probably just put zero in there, but you never know, we, maybe we wanna work with indentation or something and uh, we wanna pull that from somewhere. Now, this is interesting, our Y position we actually don't want to draw it on top of the arrow, right? Because we need one line, then we need two, three, right? Or, or four, however many we have here. I, I can't really eyeball it. But we want our first conceptual line to start below element zero. So what is our Y position? Well, it is on the second line. So how do we calculate that? Instead of it being position dot min dot Y, we need to take that and we need to add a vertical line space. Editor dot GUI layout, or sorry, utility dot single line height. Right, we want it to be on the second line. Now, to be even more specific, what we're going to do in the other ones is we're going to say what line do we want to draw this property on. But because we're starting on the top of that line right there, we just need to subtract this first part, right? So, okay, so we're going to say start, uh, start this, we'll add one single line height right here. Okay, uh, so that should start drawing on the second line height. And our width, uh, this is interesting. We could say our width is our position dot size dot x, right? Because we want to be able to resize our window and it to um, recalculate. And I'll show you something in a second here too. And our height for this is again, editor GUI utility dot single line. Um, at this point, we could probably create a property for this and just, you know, get line height or something, just save ourselves some typing. But still, I'm going to keep this really explicit just to show you. So these are all of our parameters. Um, I make, I'm putting those in the separate variables just so you can see once we start drawing this thing. So now we just need to draw it. So we're going to define a rectangle, call this draw area. Draw area is equal to new rect, x pause, y pause, width, and height. Okay. And then finally, once we've calculated how to draw it, we actually have to draw it. Editor GUI dot property field. Draw area. So this is the rectangle. This is the one we defined using our calculations here. Uh, what, which property do we want to draw in this rectangle? And that's our name. If we're giving it a label, like what is the, you know, right here we have health or damage right before this property field. What is the label we want to put here? And then we could just put whatever we want. In this case, we'll just make it name. Oh, right, we have to do a new GUI content name. Yeah, okay. So at this point, if you were to save this and you were to jump back inside of Unity, you would see something like this. You know, it's kind of funky, right? Like you're expanding your arrows, you might see the property, which is good, right? Like blah, 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 blah. Try to save something, it's not working. Why is it not working? Um, maybe you've already figured this out, but if you look in your console, you're gonna see all these errors. The problem is, double click it, we let these placeholders for our other methods, and so they're hitting this and they're erroring out. So they're never actually uh, completing all the way down here, like they're stopping right here, and we never end the property, and so we're not saving anything. If you see that, the easiest way to do is we'll just comment this out because we're not getting around to it yet. Alrighty. Okay, okay. Again, we're just going the full line for now. Save that again. Once we have those commented out, we clear this. Should be good. And so now when we come in here, our expansion works. Okay. Uh, our name, if we type in fireball. Okay, cool. Uh, so you can see it's, it's assigning the label for, I believe it's the first string that we get inside of our uh, you know, that it pulls from the other properties in here and puts it as label on the thing. So if we had fireball and uh, mystic orb, I don't know, different abilities, uh, lightning. Um, it's saving our label, right? Because that's, that's our name right here. Okay, so we did it. We added a property. It was kind of, you know, tedious, but we have our first one. Uh, in future videos, we'll get a little bit fancier with like, how can we 
you know, rearrange multiple properties, how can we draw multiple lines? But for now we have our first property drawn and uh, we can start to customize different abilities um, later on.